Hi guys, welcome back to Lucky's 3D Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the AMS, AMS2 Pro and AMS HT with your A1 series printer. Now for the demo, I'll be using my A1 3D printer, but everything works the same on the A1 Mini. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So first things first, you'll need this AMS Hub, which costs about 20 bucks from Bamboo's official store. The AMS Hub was made specifically for the A1 series printers to regulate and maintain the tension resulted from the AMS units actively pushing the filament into the extruder during printing. To keep everything running smoothly, make sure to get the hub and not the 4-in-1 PTFE adapter. So inside the box, you get the AMS hub, a 4-pin bus cable and two PTFE tubes. The long one is for the A1 and the short one for the A1 mini. Next, you want to print this AMS hub bracket. Make sure you print the correct version for your printer. The bracket for the A1 has a slightly shorter arm than the A1 mini version, but everything else is identical. To assemble it, slide the pin through the hole in the bracket. Then you want to line up that little knob on the connector with this small hole here and you want to press them together until they click. Now slide the bracket onto the X-axis motor cover and slide the AMS hub into the groove on the bracket like so. I'm using the long PTFE tube that came in the box to connect the hub to the filament hub above the print head. Add a clip or two to hold the tube and the cable together so it's tidier and so that the cable won't sag. Before connecting the AMS2 Pro, turn on the printer and go to the settings. Open the AMS settings menu and change the AMS type to AMS slash AMS2 Pro slash AMS HT. It's important that you do this first before plugging in the cables or you might run into connection errors. Now connect the 4-pin bus cable from the hub to your printer. Then connect the 6-pin bus cable from the hub to the AMS. Finally, let's connect the PTFE tube from the AMS to one of the connectors on the AMS hub. Now if everything is connected correctly, the AMS will light up. I'm using Bamboo Lab filaments and just like the AMS light, it will read the RFID tags on the spool so you can see the filament type on the screen. If you're using an AMS2 Pro or AMS HT, you can also see the chamber's humidity and temperature. So let's print this color a little faint and see if everything works properly during this 14 hour print. Aside from the edges lifting a bit, which the AMS has no influence over, there were no other issues, no filament loading errors, no under extrusion or something like that. I used the AMS2 Pro here just to confirm everything works, but now let's compare the total print times between the AMS Lite, the first gen AMS, and the AMS2 Pro. We already know that the motors on the first gen AMS are a bit slower, and one single filament change which includes retracting the old filament and loading the new one takes around 25 seconds. The motors on the AMS2 Pro are faster, and it finishes a filament change in around 15 seconds. The AMS Lite is the fastest at just 8 seconds. So in theory, printing should take longer with the AMS2 Pro compared to the AMS Lite, and even longer with the first gen AMS. To test that theory, I'm gonna print this Cubone model, which has around 480 filament changes in total. So let's print it using the AMS Lite and see how long it takes. It took 13 hours and 15 minutes to print this with the AMS Lite. Now let's connect the first gen AMS and use it to print the same model with the same settings. It took 15 hours in total, so that's 1 hour and 10 minutes slower than the AMS Lite. There's no significant difference in printing quality between both models. Now let's use the AMS2 Pro to print the same model again with the same settings. It took a total of 14 hours and 20 minutes, which is 30 minutes slower than the AMS Lite and 40 minutes faster than the first gen AMS. Again, there's no significant difference in printing quality between this and the other two models. Personally, I don't think an extra 30 minutes really matters on a 10 plus hour print. But if you want to cut print time as much as possible, you might want to invest in a high flow nozzle, like the new high flow obsidian nozzle from E3D for the A1 series, which they just released recently. 
What makes the nozzle special is that it splits the filament path into four channels, increasing the melt zone for better flow. That gives you more consistent extrusion and lets you print at higher speeds without losing quality. I already did some tests as you can tell from these super random models lying around, but I'll probably cover that in a separate video. So I'm gonna print the Cubone model again using one of E3D's own print profile which you can find on Maker World. They have profiles for different nozzle sizes and filament types so you don't have to do any flow rate testing yourself. In this case, I'm gonna use this 0.4mm profile for PLA Basic on the A1. Let's drag our model into the slicer and match the settings to the original one as much as possible without messing around with the print speed. And as you can see, the volumetric flow rate is already bumped up to 45mm cubed per second, which is more than double the stock flow rate for PLA Basic. So let's hit slice and send it to our printer. So with the high flow nozzle and the AMS2 Pro, the total print time to print this model is 13 hours and 10 minutes. That's 1 hour and 10 minutes faster than the stock nozzle. And honestly, the quality looks just as good. Pretty impressive if you ask me. Plus with the purple heatsink, it looks pretty cool. They claim that the special coating on the nozzle prevents buildups and it works with abrasive filaments too. They also make a 0.6mm version, so do check them out if you're interested and I'll leave a link to the nozzles down below. Another great feature on the AMS hub is that you can connect up to 4 AMS units to the A1, meaning you can print up to 16 colors and I'm gonna show you how. First, let's connect all the AMS units to each other. Then connect the tubes to the AMS hub. I'm gonna print this Hue Forge model which requires 15 colors. So let's load everything up, slice and send it to the printer. I know that Hue Forge has been around for a while but honestly, every time I look at a Hue Forge print, it still blows my mind. If you're going for the A1 series with AMS setup, I'd recommend getting one AMS2 Pro and at least one AMS HD. That gives you the possibility to print up to 5 colors, plus the AMS HD can dry high temp materials like TPU for AMS which needs 70 degrees Celsius for 8 hours. You can even dry two different filaments that require different drying times. With the AMS2 Pro though, you'll need to buy the switching adapter separately to connect it to a power source to use the drying function since it's not included in the box. Besides drying, the AMS is also great for storing filaments. You can even print the spool holders and fill them with desiccants to keep the chamber dry. Personally, I think this is the best setup for beginners if you're not going with the AMS light combo. Currently, Bamboo Lab is running their Black Friday sale until December, so now it's a good time to grab discounted AMS units. The A1 series printers are also on sale, so this is a perfect chance to get a first or even a second A1 series printer. So I hope you found this video helpful and let me know if you are planning to pick up an AMS unit for your A1 series printer. All the files and accessories I used are linked in the description so make sure to check that out. And as always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next one.